Okay, next we're going to be talking about difference quotients. And we'll start off with this idea of the derivative at a point. So let's imagine we have our axes. Our independent variable is x. And we have some function of x, which in this case we'll just have as a simple curve in the plane. And suppose we have some x value here. We'll call it c. And that corresponds to a y value of, of course, f of c. And our goal is to find the derivative at that point c. So we want to find the slope of the graph at a particular point. Another way to say this is that we're trying to find the instantaneous rate of change of one variable relative to another at a particular moment. And we call this the derivative of the function at a given point, or at a given value of x, in this case, this x value. And the derivative will be the slope of the graph at that point. And that will be the same as the slope of the line tangent to the graph at that point. Now we started by approximating the derivative by finding the slope of a small segment. So if we had some other x value up here, we'll call it x, and that would correspond to another point on the graph that has a y value of f of x. And we can get a little segment here. Connecting those two points gives us a little line segment, and the slope of that line segment might be a good approximation for the slope right at that point. And it will be a very good approximation if that line segment is really short. In other words, if this interval here is really small. Or if this x value is very close to c, then this little segment here is very short, and the slope of that segment is very close to the slope at c. And we can see what the slope would be. Slope is just rise over run. So I'm going to take the interval here on my y-axis and the interval here on my x-axis and divide. So the slope calculation is f of x minus f of c over x minus c. And an expression of this form is called a difference quotient. And it should be obvious why it's called that, because here's a difference there, one thing minus another and a difference here, one thing minus another, and we have the quotient of those two. Now what we did before, early in the course, was we did approximations like this. We pick a really tiny interval here, and we get a pretty good approximation. This, this little segment is a pretty good approximation to the slope. But now we're going to find the exact value of the derivative at point C. And we can find the exact value if we imagine this point X sliding to the left here all the way over to point C. Now that will give us a little slope calculation here of 0 over 0. And we can't do that, but the slope does approach a particular value as x gets closer and closer to c. And we can find that value by taking the limit of the difference quotient. So what we will be calculating is this. The limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. And that value is the derivative at point C. It will be the exact value of the slope at that point. Now one thing to note what we're finding here and what we're not finding. The original function here, f, is a function of x. And the derivative, or the derived function, is also a function of x. And, and as a derivative, we've seen the notation before. The derivative function, or the derived function, is f prime of x. And it makes sense that the derived function would also be a function because it would have a value at any given value for x. And this little prime symbol right here, again, has nothing to do with prime numbers. It's just to distinguish the derived function from the original function. Now, when we do this difference quotient and we take the limit, the limit here as x approaches c, we're finding the exact value at this point c, but we're not finding this derived function. Instead of finding the derived function, we're just finding the value of that function at one point. So we're, we're finding f primed of c. So the value of the derived function at one particular x value, and that is that limit. The limit as x approaches c of that difference quotient. Just that right here f of x minus f of c 
over x minus c. So this is what we're finding, the derivative at a point. And this is one definition of a derivative. We call it the derivative at a point. Now this isn't hard. Don't get confused by the notation. This is just a slope, change in y over change in x. We're taking the limit as those little quantities get really small, so as this segment here gets really tiny, and that's the value of the slope, the derivative, at that point c. Now with that picture in mind right there, let me draw a couple of other similar pictures and show you some other notations that are commonly used for the same concept. So this is the same idea, just with some different letters basically. But you should be aware that this is commonly shows up in, in calculus textbooks or calculus courses with other notations. So here's x and f of x. We have some curve. And let's imagine some values here, we'll call it a and b. And so on the y-axis, obviously, we're going to have f of a and f of b. And the slope right here at that point, at x equals a, is going to be the limit as b approaches a of f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And you should see that f of b minus f of a is just our change in y, and b minus a is our change in x. So this is just delta y over delta x. That's just a slope calculation. We're just letting our delta y and delta x get infinitely small, because as b approaches a, this point here slides down this curve, and instead of this segment, we get tinier and tinier and tinier segments. And the last one there that's infinitely small has a slope that is exactly equal to the slope of the curve at that point. So this is just another way of expressing the exact same concept. Okay? And here's one other way. x and f of x. Okay, let's imagine some point on the curve here and we'll call it x. And so this corresponds to a y value of f of x. And then let's imagine another point on the curve here, and we're going to name this interval right here. And we'll call it h. So this point here is x plus h. And so this value is f of x plus h. And then expressing the same concept here, we have the limit as this point right here approaches this one. Or in other words, as this horizontal piece here shrinks to zero. So I'm going to say the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x. And that's just this vertical interval here over the horizontal the horizontal interval which is just h so this is another way of expressing the same concept and that's a very common notation okay next we need to put in some actual numbers in here so next we'll work through some examples some particular examples of actual functions with actual values